So you want to be a better player in Apex Legends, huh? Well, you've come to the right place. My name is Randy, and today and on this channel, I help people get better at Apex Legends pretty much for a living. And what I'm going to do today is talk to you about five of the crucial things that I've seen players do that hold them back from getting to that high level of play, whether it be in ranked play, getting more RP, or whether in just in your casual games and you want to slay out more with your friends and not be the fourth when you should be the third and somebody else is getting your spot. This video should help you do that and do it quickly. Today is one of those videos where I feel like I've got a lot to offer and we're going to have a good time. And if you watch the entire thing, I almost guarantee that you will be a better player for it. However, because I took a long time off doing this video and I actually spent a lot of days grinding ranks, not making any content, just getting footage and, and really prepping these ideas, I decided to get a sponsor that I think you all are going to like, Raid Shadow Legends. Now, Raid Shadow Legends is an iPhone, Google Store, Android game, but it doesn't really feel like that. It's got almost 10 million players worldwide that have already downloaded the game in just six months and 300,000 reviews with almost a perfect score on the Play Store. And the best part, it is totally free. I mean, look at these graphics. I was actually blown away at the way the world looks and the champions. And in Raid, you have the personal ability to customize and choose the artifacts and design a unique mastery build for each one of the champions you want to play. This game is growing super fast and the highly anticipated new Faction Wars feature is now live as well. And there is a new awesome rewards program for new players. You can get a new daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. My name's gonna be Rain Day on the app, so if you guys wanna join my clan or friend me, make sure to download it today. Also, I, I just found it really hard to find an immersive RPG lately in my experience anywhere, and the fact that it's on my phone, just taking a look at the characters, I really love the options I had to choose from. It gave me a feeling of depth I wasn't expecting from a mobile experience. And, you know, I'm traveling a lot. I do a lot of events and tournaments. I can't always bring a big computer on the road with me. So a game like this that I can sink my teeth into is amazing on the go. So what are you guys waiting for? Go ahead into the video description, click on the special links for me, for the Rainstorm, and you'll not only help me out, but you'll get 50,000 free silver and a free Epic Champion as a part of the new player program to start your journey. I mean, seriously. Seriously, guys, battles on this thing are pretty dang awesome and simple to get invested in. It walks you through it all, get into your campaign, you're already moving on, progressing, and leveling up your characters. I found this to be incredibly fun, and I think you guys will too. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and click that link, show them that the Rainstorm shows up for these sponsorships. Now, a big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for doing that. Let's get into the ranked gameplay that you guys are watching and the tips on how to be a better high tier Apex Legends player and, and do it quickly. The first tip that I'm going to go over is your landing. You need to get your landing right. One of the things I see bad players do most consistently is they have inconsistent landing spots. They land all the time, everywhere, with no level of uh, understanding what the loot is like, and that's just a problem. One of the ways Battle Royales you can minimize RNG or randomness, basically, and what pros do is they decide to land at pretty much the same spot every single time. And what that does is it allows them to at least know the layout, pretty much know the loot, and essentially take away the factor of will I get a gun, will there be stuff here that causes strife for a lot of us Battle Royale players. Now, this can get messed up, especially in high-level tournaments. When I was casting and, and analyzing and doing stage hosting over there in Poland for the 500,000 Apex Invitational, one of the things that happened is players were grouped up with other teams who would also land where they landed. So what do you need to have? You also need to have a backup plan. Or you just need to be better than the team that's going to land with you. But sometimes it doesn't even work out that way because it's called 50 50 ing where you split the loop with another team. Some places are big enough, but some places aren't. And a fight there, wasting resources, shield cells, healing, poking each other, will just ruin both of your chances at having a good placement later on in the match. One of the best things to do, like I said, to become a better player instantly is to find a good place to land and land there consistently. Don't let that be a factor that's taking you out of your games. Whether you get a gun, whether you get loot should not be a reason why you're losing a lot of your Apex games, but I see it happen all the time. If this is you, stop doing it. You will become a better player very quickly. The number two aspect of what I want to talk about today is the weapon meta. Now the weapon meta is something that you have to understand the best weapons and you have to use them. Now I've often gone against this in my life as a person. Uh, I don't want to use the OP thing. I don't want to use the thing that uh, everyone is using to get a quick and easy kind of a successful route. I want to be the creative. I want to be the artist. I want to do it the way no one else has. But unfortunately in Apex Legends, it's going to make your life a lot harder. One of the things I suggest is humbling yourself like I've had to do and use the weapons that are good. 
For instance, the charge rifle right now is the best weapon in the game. If you don't use it, you're giving someone else the opportunity to use a charge rifle against you and you're probably not going to win if they have it. It's not being scummy. It's not saying, oh, I'm still not protesting or asking for changes or adjustments. It's just knowing what works and, and working it. There's no shame in doing that. It's a game we're supposed to game it. This is one of the things I see a lot of players do. Good players do it because they think, oh, I don't want to um, be subjected to, you know, acting like I'm using an OP weapon. I'm going to I'm going to rebel against it. Bad players just don't know and then they don't use it. There needs to be a blend of using what works. R99s, peacekeepers, wingmans, trust me, these things are still good. The more you use the best weapons, the more you will find that your games get easier and easier. Try to try to, you know, you know, make a Mozambique work or an alternator. Alternator is okay but an re45 work just because you know uh an r99's op it's not helping you it's not helping your team it's not allowing you to get faster rank points hopefully though uh it will allow you to spice your games up if you want but this isn't about spicing your games up it's about helping you to be more effective use the best weapons understand what they are and that will help you eliminate a lot of the stress in 1v1 fights and in general team assistance when you're playing the third thing I want to talk about is to rotate. The rotations in this map, especially World's Edge, are a little harder. And what I've found is that if you rotate late, you're going to get caught in this zone a lot easier than King's Canyon because it's just so much bigger. One of the big things teams need to do and players like you might need to do to get better is to rotate earlier and decide how you're going to take those fights when you do rotate. Circles and rotations become a huge part of high-level play, and it was one of the things that shocked me when I went to Apex and Poland and, and, and talked with pros and we just did a podcast with Hotsik and Urban uh, on fire and talking to these guys about how valuable rotations are, how much of an aspect of where they land, where they want to go after that is planned ahead and decisive. It's, it's very fascinating and it shows you what the high level of this game looks like. Most players don't think at that level and it's one way to instantly improve. But one thing that I think is obvious is that if you are indecisive about where you're landing, if you're indecisive about, wow, about where you're rotating, and you're indecisive on your team composition or team comms, you're going to have worse results and you're not going to rank up as fast. I mean, think about it. If you decide that you're going to go to the grocery store, you're going to get there, get your stuff, and come back home quickly. If you decide, well, I may go to the grocery store, I may go work out, and you're driving to one, then you go decide to drive to the other and turn around, you turn when you get in the parking lot, you're taking more time, you're not being efficient. That's the same thing as deciding where you need to rotate and when you need to rotate. Just do it. That's one of the biggest things I see players who aren't performing well do. They take too much time to rotate and make decisions that way. Also think about it like this, in in-game fights, you do have to be able to say, I'm pushing or I'm staying. If one of your teammates pushes, one of your teammates stays, and you go in between, you're probably all going to die. If a teammate pushes, it's better to decide to either push with him completely or completely stay back and abandon him. That way you will at least have two out of your three members doing the same exact thing and a better likelihood to win. One of the big ways I see people not succeed is by letting one of their teammates basically die because they're too indecisive to make a decision to follow them or to stay behind and they get caught somewhere in the middle cut that out of your game be more decisive you will be a better player you will rank up a lot faster in apex legends now number four is a general weapon mechanic tip and general fighting best practices i've covered this excuse me, in other videos, but I wanted to make sure that I covered it in this video because I feel like this has a lot of good information for, for players in general and it will attract eyes to this video and I want to make sure I cover some of the basics for newer and advanced players. The first thing is high ground. High ground value is something that you have to understand exists in all first person shooters and in Apex even more so. Characters like Pathfinder, characters that can get up to the high ground are always going to be valuable because that means that they are unsusceptible to being shot unless you are on equal high ground with them most of the time. As you can see this charge rifle gameplay a little different, they're peeking, they're poking, they're getting punished for it. But you should have an advantage in almost all situations. It's not only great to escape from fights, but it's great to also get a vantage point over where people are rotating and information on the map, which is very important. Uh, late game circle camping and using the circle as a wall. Now these are things that most people don't do, but as you're noticing, we don't have a team behind us. It's because we have a wall, we have the apex banner, we have the train we just came from and cleared, and also behind us we have the, f the circle essentially, the fog. That means that we only have to focus on our forward front. Think like a scary movie, you know, there's a bad guy in the house, what are you gonna do? Go stand in the middle of an open living room with five exits and seven windows? No, you're gonna go to a bedroom, you're gonna sit right behind a wall, and you're gonna make sure that you can see the front door, the only opening to it, ready with a 
gun, an axe, whatever it is, to be able to bat somebody down and make sure that you know when they're coming in. You're not going to give yourself five different angles to be shot from or taken advantage of, and that's the same thing in Apex Legends. A lot, I see a lot of players standing in places that are really exposed, and if you're in the middle of a circle in a building, that's one thing. But a lot of times, it, it, it doesn't work out that well. Reloading. Reloading behind cover is one of the key things I don't see players do. They go out, they get exposed, they try to take a fight, they don't realize their gun isn't, isn't loaded, and they have to reload in the middle of a fight while being exposed. You should never pop out of a fight with your weapon un, uh, not ready to finish somebody else. Applying offensive pressure is essentially defense in a different way. As a soccer player, football player, I love to play offense to put the defenders and the midfielders on the back foot. So they were tired when they got the ball and had to play offense. Same thing with your weapon. If you're firing, you're doing damage, that's time that you're forcing them to now think about healing, retreating, and not pushing you. You should always have an opportunity to push them and apply pressure when you reload. So, so you need to reload in cover to be able to do that when you get out and start your fight. Another thing is weapon swapping. Weapon swapping is a very important tactic, and if you have a stock, that's actually going to help. Higher level stocks will help with your weapon swapping speed, meaning you can burst someone down with an R99, you miss the full clip, swap straight, uh, straight to your peacekeeper, your shotgun, your wingman, instantly burst them down so they don't have a way to get away before, and, uh, before you're able to finish them and heal up and get back to their team. One of the biggest things I see a lot of bad players or players who just aren't new or a little newer to the game not get down perfectly get that in your game you will be a lot better uh crouching and jumping in fights is another thing that can help you to change your mentality and be a little bit better of a player you also can slide to gain some extra distance in fights like you'll see here and get around some corners and just be able to heal up and get back into it and also focus fire if you and your team are fighting Try to fight the same person at the same time. That way you'll get double damage and get a knock. The first team to lose a player entirely is at a significant disadvantage in winning that fight. And honestly, you're going to find some success if you can do that. The last thing to be a high level player that I want to end this video on is your mentality shift to be a high level player. You have to believe that you can do this. Just like in life, you cannot go out there into the world and think that somebody is going to be better than you and then succeed all the time. You have to have some level of confidence and that confidence comes from putting in the work. In my entire life, I've never seen nothing improve my mentality to be a better player than going to that late night gym session when I know somebody else wasn't working as hard as me. Getting to the field a little earlier when I know my teammates were just waking up. Uh, putting in the extra time, grinding hours that you guys don't see from my content to try to get better and just make more fun, better gameplays to make a good video for you all. All of those things will make you a better player and if you put the time in, but believe in yourself, then you're going to be able to make things happen. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I really hope that you enjoyed listening to some of these tips, and maybe that'll help you as far as some of the basics of getting better at this game. If it doesn't, well, I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me, and I hope you check out Raid Shadow Legends as well in the comment section below and that link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and leave your tips to become a better player in the comments so that we all get to be better as a result of the conversation. As always, never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you all next time.